Good morning or good afternoon. I would like to welcome everyone to Introduction to Unified Computing System, Cisco UCS Central. We're glad to have you with us. A few housekeeping notes to begin. As you've entered the WebEx console, you either joined us by audio broadcast or by phone, which is automatically muted. Because of our large audience in attendance today, you will remain muted throughout the event. When you have a question, please feel free to enter it into the WebEx Q&A panel as you think of them. You can find the Q&A panel on the bottom right corner of your console. Please leave the WebEx chat window for communication to our WebEx facilitator for any technical problems or issues you may be experiencing. Again, please enter your questions for our speakers in the Q&A panel. We would appreciate your input regarding today's webcast, and a short survey will pop up once you close your browser at the end of this event. At this time, I'd like to introduce our host for today, Satish Chandran. Thank you, Luis. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cisco Support Committee. Today, we present a live webcast expert series on our, and our topic today will be Introduction to Cisco Unified Computing System Central. My name is Satish Chandran, and I'll be moderating today's event. Our expert joining me today is Chetan Parikh. Chetan is a customer support engineer from the server virtualization team at the Cisco Technical Assistance Center in Bangalore, India. He has over seven years of experience with a wide range of Cisco data center products, such as Cisco UCS and Cisco Nexus 1000V. He's also experienced on VMware virtualization products. Welcome, Chetan. Thank you, Satish. Uh, we are joined by Pragna and Ganesh. They will help in answering your questions. So please feel free to post any questions in the Q&A panel. Okay, so now I'd like to briefly outline the format for today's Expert Series webcast. Our expert will start with a presentation on introduction on Cisco UCS Central for the first hour of the program, and then we will provide an answer to the question, what do Cisco UCS, the Academy Awards, and India have in common? Stay tuned for that. Then we will dive into the live question submissions from the audience for the remainder of the event. During our live presentation, you may submit your technical question to be answered by our presenter and the expert panelists using the Q&A box on the right-hand side of the console. The team of technical experts is well-versed in Cisco UCS Central, so please begin posting your questions now to give us the best chance of answering them. If you experience any technical issues, please post your questions in the chat window. So we'll be asking polling questions during this webcast, and we highly encourage you to participate by answering them. It will give uh, Chetan a view of the uh, you know, idea how to present and what e exactly to talk about. And you may download a copy of today's PDF presentation using the link in the chat window. That's in the Cisco Support Community. The document ID is 29871. Now let's get started with today's event. All attendees that join the event will get 125 Cisco Preferred Access Points, and there will be a raffle for one $50 Amazon gift card. So let's start with a polling question for the audience. And the question is, have you implemented Cisco UCS Central? Option A, I have already implemented it. Option B, I'm looking to implement it soon. And option C, I would like to learn more about it. Please take a moment to answer so that the expert can tailor his presentation to your needs. The poll is open on the, on the right-hand side of the console. Okay, so while you respond to the first poll, make sure you su uh, to submit your questions as we will answer, in, answer them later in the webcast. And, uh, okay, a few more seconds to go for the poll. Okay, so while you submit the poll, let me let me hand over the mic to Chetan. Chetan, over to you. Thank you, Satish. Uh, hello, everyone. So welcome uh, now officially. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'll be taking you through an introduction of UCS Central. Uh, I'm guessing most of you have implemented uh, or have working knowledge of UCSM. So what UCS Central is, that's what I'll be taking you through. So here's the agenda for today. So we'll be going through some basic introduction about UCS Central, why we need it, how it is packaged and installed, how we register UCSM with UCS Central, 
what we'll go through the architecture overview of the uh, UCS Central, how UCS Central or UCSM and UCSM resolve policies, and uh, some features quickly. At the end, uh, we'll uh, try to uh, we'll also have a demo of the uh, of the UCS Central registration and just a basic overview of that. So, looking at the uh, basic building blocks of UCS. So we have a server, that's the most basic unit. Uh, <clears throat> it sits on a chassis, and this chassis can be part of a domain. The domain may have multiple chassis, and all of these are actually managed by a UCS manager. Now, what if you have multiple domains in a single data center? So uh, the UCSM is limited by 20, uh, 20 chassis that it can manage, uh, depending on the type of a fabric interconnect that you use. So that the, the limitation may doesn't allow you to centrally manage uh, the entire UCSM infrastructure. So and when it comes to global data centers, it becomes even more difficult with so many UCS managers. So that's where UCS Central comes into the picture. UCS Central uh, it's basically a centralized uh, place where you can manage multiple UCSM domains. So as I said, single as the number of UCS managers grew we have a requirement to have uh, everything centrally managed uh, so that it's easier for manageability and uh, you don't have to look for various IP addresses and different things. You can manage it from a single point. So so basic summary of UCS Central. At this moment, uh, the current uh, version of UCS Central, uh, it provides you uh, the inventory. It gives you access to faults. Uh, it gives you event aggregations. You can uh, create global ID pools, and uh, those can be used by the various UCSMs which are registered on the UCS Central. And uh, last, uh, we can also do firmware management uh, via this. Uh, and also, we can schedule backups for the UCS Manager con configuration or UCS Central configuration. And you can define some uh, admin policies which might be helpful. Uh, in the features which will be produced, uh, which will be introduced in the future releases, uh, you will have global service profiles uh, and templates and policies. Uh, you will have statistics aggregation, uh, HA for UCS central virtual machine, and uh, also support UCS deployments in multiple data centers. So quickly, we'll get into the packaging and installation. So UCS Central is released as an OVA file. Uh, you can deploy this uh, UCS Central virtual machine on a VMware ESX server uh, using this OVA file. Uh, any upgrades to the service providers or the uh, UCS Central uh, that needs to be installed are, are released via a .bin file. You can see these on the uh, cisco.com uh, website. Uh, and if you want to manage the virtual, uh, if you want to host the uh, UCS, UCS Central uh, virtual machine on Hyper-V, then you can actually convert the uh, VMDK file, which is deployed on ESX server, to a .vhd, and then use this uh, VHD file to uh, create a virtual machine on the Hyper-V server. So just a quick uh, look at how we deploy the OVA. So you go to File menu on the vSphere client. You click on Deploy OVF template. Select the OVA template, and it will start deploying. This is hardly a. Uh, it hardly takes 10 minutes to deploy the UCS Central virtual machine. Once it is deployed, you power on the virtual machine, and these are the uh, details that you require. These are this is the configuration that is there. So as you can see, my IP address that I've given is 10.76.78.254. It will ask you for the net mask and the default gateway. A name, a host name for the UCS Central, uh, DNS server IP address, and the do, uh, do domain name. Once you, uh, there's one more very important thing that you have to enter while uh, when you configure UCS Central. That's the shared secret. This shared secret, we'll look why this is used uh, in the coming slides. Uh, it's very important that you keep note of the shared secret that you have configured. Once you do this, your UCS Central is ready to use, and uh, you can start registering your UCS managers with your UCS Central. So quickly, we'll uh, we'll go through the uh, registration uh, overview, how, how UCS managers can be registered 
with UCS Central. So why do we need to register UCS managers with UCS Central? As I said, you need a central point of management for UCS managers, for multiple UCS managers. So to avail the facilities, the services which UCS Central provides, you need to register a UCS manager with UCS Central. The so as I said, shared secret was an important part when you configure UCS Central. The shared secret is used when you register the UCS manager with UCS Central. Uh, once you use, once you put type in the shared secret and the IP address of the UCS Central on UCS Manager, uh, the registration goes ahead and it will. And based, uh, you can also define uh, some group qualification, domain group qualification policies based on which. Uh, the UCS domain will become part of a specific domain group and uh, you can deploy various policies. We'll look into this uh, during the demo. And uh, you cannot switch UCS, uh, I mean, you cannot remove, keep multiple uh, UCS central registrations on a single UCS manager. You need to first unregister from the UCS uh, central and then re uh, register on the new one. So looking at uh, the registration quickly. So the registration, is done via the UCS manager. You cannot register UCS uh, manager on UCS Central from the UCS Central. You have to do it via the communication services which are available on the UCS manager. So when you when you uh, try register the UCS manager, you will need the shared secret which you configured on the UCS Central. When the shared secret is given, uh, then the registration completes, and uh, the policies which you have configured on UCS Central they take effect, they are pushed to the UCS manager. Uh, bulk registration can be done via the XML API which is available for UCS managers. So just quickly how you can do this. So this is my UCS manager screenshot. Uh, I go to the admin tab, the communication management, and there you will see UCS central. And th th there's an option to register with UCS central. Once you do this, it will ask you for the IP address or the host name of the UCS Central, uh, you can enter the shared secret and it will con continue with the uh, registration. We'll look at the policy resolution control that you see uh, in the later part of the uh, presentation. So as registration, uh, so we'll quickly, we'll look at the how the registration works. So UCS manager initiates the registration by providing the shared secret. Once the shared secret is given, UCS Central and UCS uh, manager, they exchange their certificates and their global unique identifiers. Uh, once they have exchanged this, then the registration completes. And uh, you cannot have a UCS manager registered on multiple UCS centrals. And if you want to want to register it on a different UCS central, then you need to unregister it. Unregistration can happen even if the UCS central is not available. Uh, UCS manager, you, you don't need the UCS central to be available all the time for unregistering it. So quickly looking at the unregister, it's, the process is same. Uh, you saw the uh, screenshot where you register. Once you have registered, you will have an option to unregister the UCS Central. When, when you unregister the UCS Central, all the policies are cleaned up. Uh, any identities which are, uh, uh, which are being used by the UCS manager from the UCS Central, they will show up as local uh, uh, something that is configured locally on. So for example, let's say you have configured a MAC address. You're using a MAC address from a global pool which is defined on UCS Central. That will appear as a local MAC address configured on the adapter, not something that is used from a pool. So we'll uh, look at the architecture overview. So UCS Central, there is, you need a hypervisor uh, on the hypervisor sits the UCS Central virtual machine. The storage is the uh, VMDK file for this. This has so th there are some very important services which are required uh, by the UCS Central and the various UCS managers which are registered. Uh, the core service is the uh, main service which is responsible for communicating with various uh, UCS managers. Uh, the service registry uh, policy manager, resource manager. Identifier Manager and Operations Manager. Now we'll look into each of these services uh, in detail in the in the coming slides. So this sits on a storage. This virtual machine uh, 
you can keep it on a shared storage or local storage depending on uh, how your infrastructure is the ucs managers register with the ucs central you can manage the ucs central via xml api just like you have the fa this facility with ucs managers and uh, ucs central has an another external uh, connectivity to cisco.com this is primarily used to download firmware from cisco.com uh, you can schedule the ucs central to uh, go ahead and download uh, firmware from cisco.com so uh, as i said uh, there are five different uh, service providers uh, services you, which which are running on the ucs central and these are the most important services uh, so first is service registry second one identifier manager policy manager operations manager and resource manager so we look into each uh, in detail uh, just uh, so you can check what all services our uh, providers are available uh, and they have registered with the ucs central in the uh, in this uh, place where uh, you see the screenshot right so service registry so why service registry is required so service registry you can term it as a central directory of with the various services which are running on the ucs central uh, all the services like identifier manager operation manager policy manager they come when they uh, when the services come up they come and register themselves with the service registry and so do the clients when we say clients we mean the ucs manager uh, why do we need the service registry the services which are running on the uh, ucs central they need to talk with each other as well as they need to talk to the clients and vice versa so for this they need to know how to initiate the inter service communication and once the services have, services have registered with service registry this list is actually distributed to all the services so this is the most important service if it doesn't come up then the service providers which are there running on the ucs central they will not be able to uh, communicate with each other identifier manager so identifier manager the service basically it provides a centralized management for the uuids the mac addresses uh, wwpn wwnn uh, pools the ip addresses for management and the iqn numbers for various ucs managers ucs managers can use their local pools or they can request uh, identifiers from the identifier manager of the uh, at, which are in the global pool identifier manager is also uh, responsible for avoiding any conflicts uh, between uh, any identity so let's say you have two ucs managers registered with the ucs central and there are certain mac addresses or wwpns or maybe ip addresses which are conflicting which are common between the two ucs managers so identifier manager will uh, will check this and it will it will track it will flag a fault stating that uh, there's a conflict uh, you can still use similar ip addresses if you mark these uh, ip addresses or mac addresses as uh, private to that specific uh, ucs manager uh, this is probably useful for in private service uh, private clouds so uh, that's how that's how it can be used otherwise identifier manager if it's not marked as private identifier manager will uh, will uh, mark those conflicting identities as uh, as faults so resource manager what's the resource manager so it is basically responsible to give you the it displays the inventory on the ucs central it pulls the inventory of the ucs managers uh these in these in this inventory can be logical or physical uh logic when we say logical the logical part would be the service profiles the service profile templates uh the domain groups uh which are on the ucs central and the physical components would be the fabric interconnect the iom's the chassis servers adapters etc uh it also resource manager is also uh also used uh to summarize faults it will uh, pull the faults from the uh, ucs managers and it will display them so by default uh, ucs central uh, ucs central the resource manager will go ahead and uh, poll for the ucs manager inventory every 10 minutes uh, this can be configured manually i mean if you want 
less than 10 minutes it should pull the inventory in less every 5 minutes you can do that and uh, maximum duration can be 60 minutes so least amount least uh, period that uh, in which the ucs central goes and pulls for the inventory is 10 minutes and uh, the max uh, sorry 5 minutes and uh, the maximum maximum will be 60 minutes and uh, the faults are pulled every one minute this is not configurable uh, and anything that happens like the fsm if you want to monitor that doesn't require any polling that is shown to you in real time you don't uh, need anything uh, you don't need uh, any like you don't have to wait for uh, the the fsm to display all right so moving on policy manager so all the pools the policies which you configure are actually configured on the policy manager now i i'm i'm pretty sure there might be a, there might be some confusion about when i say pools it should be on identifier manager and uh, why why we have to define why it is defined on policy manager so policy manager you just define the pools these pools are actually used by the identifier manager so once you define this uh, policy manager will go ahead and uh, assign these things uh, these components of its uh, like pools will be def uh, assigned to identifier manager and domain groups which you define will be assigned to the resource manager why the domain groups come under this we'll look into domain groups in detail uh, in the upcoming uh, in the upcoming slides uh, domain groups is actually grouping of multiple ucs domains uh, so these are actually handled by resource manager but they are defined under the policy manager so operations manager the last uh, service provider operations manager basically provides you functionality to uh, manage the firmware so firmware upgrades catalog upgrades catalog management uh, host firmware management backups they all can be scheduled and managed via the operations manager so this is the service so now you know which service is responsible for what and uh, if in case you run into any trouble uh, you know which component to uh, troubleshoot to the presentation i'd like to take a moment to ask another polling question the question is which service provider allows you to create id pools option a identify manager option b service registry option c policy manager option d resource manager please take a moment to answer the poll is open on the right hand side of the console and also make sure to submit your questions as we have a panel of experts ready to answer them some of them will be answered by Abhinav, Pragna, and Ganesh at the end. Over to you, Chetan. Thank you, Satish. So, okay. So, we look into policy resolution. What exactly is policy resolution, and why do we need it? So, in today's world, when we are using UCS Manager, the policies are actually defined on the UCS Manager and then pushed to the endpoints. The endpoint would be the fabric interconnect, the servers, the chassis, the adapters. So, and and then any future upgrades, updates to the uh, uh, policies will be sent via the UCS manager. Now, how does this change uh, when we use UCS Central? So, in UCS Central, this is where we define the policies, and the policies are resolved on the UCS manager. Why do I need resolution? Uh, w what is resolution exactly? So, basically, you have multiple policies you define you can define policies on ucs manager even after you you can you register it with ucs central now there could be policies how how the ucs manager will decide that which policy should apply so it starts with the local most policy for example a service profile is part of a of an organization under ucs manager an org under UCS manager. So UCS manager, let's say there is a firmware package which is called F1. Uh, firmware, uh, when I'm saying pack, I'm sorry, package. There's a firmware policy called F1 which is uh, which is defined on the service profile. Uh, it should the service profile should use that firmware. So how will UCS manager find out which where where this resides? Does it reside on UCS central? Does it have to pull it from UCS central or should it be local? So UCS manager will start from the local most thing. If if uh, the service profile is under the organization HR, so it will look 
in that particular organization if there is any firmware policy named F1. If it doesn't find there, then it will go to the root, root uh, the parent, the root uh, organization. It will look for the package over there. If it doesn't find there, then it will look for the same policy in the UCS central. So this is how it resolves policies. Now, I, I spoke about one policy where there was a name called F1. So this policy is called a named policy. Similar to a named policy, there is uh, there are admin policies which we define on UCS Central. These admin policies are basically configuration parts like time uh, time zone configuration which you can do, DNS servers uh, and other things. These can be defined on UCS Central and a UCS manager can decide whether it wants to have this, uh, pull this from the UCS Central or does it want to do it locally. Uh, if you remember, I had uh, shown you, I told that we'll talk about the policy control later. So we'll uh, look into that part in the upcoming slide. So policy updates, they can be sent through. So wh why do I need this? Uh, have, have, has anyone thought about this? Why I need to define policies on UCS Central? So the main reason is to have a central place where you can uh, have common set of parameters configured. And if the UCS manager, let's say localization, you your UCS central is up is in the is in probably Europe and one is in Australia. You and but you still want them to be part of a single domain. So this configuration you don't have to configure everything on UC, each UCS manager. You configure the domain in UCS central, and uh, you go ahead and uh, change the time time zone as per your uh, on the UCS manager locally. So. All right, so I, I got the polling uh, result. So the service provider where you define uh, the the pools is actually the policy manager. The identifier manager is takes the pool and it de it deploys it 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 distributes the pool or the identities in the pool. Uh, the policy manager is where uh, where we define the pool. So we have uh, a good I mean almost thirty eight percent people who answered it right. Uh, yeah, this was a tricky question, so I don't blame you <laughs> if you said identifier manager. All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, once, once again, the same thing. Uh, def you define policy on UCS Central, uh, resolve pol UCSM resolves policies, and then it pushes these policies to the endpoints. And any updates will be sent via the UCS Central. All right, so if uh, we come to the global policy control, so if you see from the screenshot, uh, when you register the UCSM, uh, right at the page, the UCS central, you will see policy resolution control. So here you, you have uh, various policy resolution controls which are available, like how you would like to, in, to handle infrastructure and catalog firmware, how you would like to manage time zone, how, how you would like to configure communication services or DNS management. So all these options are there. And you can actually configure where the UCS manager pulls it from. If you keep it to local, none, none of the updates, none of the policies which are defined on the UCS central will be pushed to the UCS manager. So if you want to look at a term, then you can say UCS manager subscribes to these policies. If it says global, then it has, it has subscribed to these policies from the UCS central, and it will pull pull these uh, these uh, policies from the UCS central. Okay, all right. So we'll uh, go into the features part. How uh, I'll give you a basic overview of how the UCS central looks, how the the dashboard is. Uh, then we'll look into global IDs, how what what centralized firmware upgrades are domain groups and various various features so this is a basic uh, look of uh, ucs central uh, this is the equipment tab just like ucs manager it has equipment then net uh, servers network storage and uh, the additional part is operations management and administration is as it is on the left hand side you will see the various domain groups when I say domain groups, these are a group of various UCS managers which are registered. Uh, then uh, to the right, you will see a basic inventory of uh, basic information about the servers or whatever component you are, you've highlighted. Uh, you can launch KVM 
from this or the UCS manager separately uh, via this. Uh, the, as you see at the top, it will show you the UCS faults. You just click on that and you will reach the centralized fault summary. Uh, you expand the fault type you want and click on the UCS manager. It will give you the fault. This gives you a very basic uh, basic information about the fault, uh, like just the summary. If you want to see the date details, you need to click on that, and that is actually on the UCS manager. That is, it doesn't keep information about the details of the fault uh, in the UCS central. It just gives you the summary of the fault. Global IDs. So, as I said, now back to the question. Global IDs. Uh, the pools are defined by in the policy manager and distributed to identifier manager service. Okay, so how how does this work? So I can I can create a global ID pool like for WWNN or WWPN or IP pools and UCS managers can use either the global pool or the pools which are local pools which are uh, defined locally on the UCS manager. So so let's say UCS1, the pool one has uh, exhausted, there are no more identities. UCS manager can go ahead and ask for uh, identities from the global pool. Uh, and uh, as I said, identifier manager will take care of any conflicts. So centralized firmware. So we you you must have, all of you must have done firmware man firmware upgrades at at some point of time we come we keep coming up with uh, various up, uh, various up updates for our firmware there are a lot of bugs uh, which are resolved in upgrades in updates newer updates so you need to download them and upgrade now now let's say you have 10 ucs managers how difficult is the task you have to go download the firmware upload it to the ucs manager and then uh, configure that now that that is what is very much simplified on UCS Central. So on UCS Central, you can actually configure Cisco, uh, your Cisco.com uh, uh, user, user ID and uh, password. And you can schedule the uh, UCS Central to go and check for updates uh, available for UCS. And once, once it sees that there is an update available, it will go ahead and download that. These updates are actually saved on the UCS Central and that is why we have a 60 GB uh, disk on the UCS Central Virtual Machine, which will store all the firmware as well, along with the inventory on the other information. Now, once it's down, it's downloaded, you can, via the global firmware policies, you can actually push the updates to the UCS manager and the endpoints. And uh, with uh, 2.1, we have a firmware auto install, so you don't have to worry about updating each and every component like the CIMC, the adapter, the uh, UCS manager. Like you have to keep an eye on, you you have to look at the configuration guide all the time. You don't have to do that with the firmware auto install. It will do that uh, automatically for you uh, in a certain order, which is defined. Uh, so we look into what domain groups are. So domain groups, as I said, uh, domain groups are grouping of multiple UCS domains. Why do you want to do that? So maybe that you want to do, you want to group certain some UCS managers uh, based on their geographical location. Maybe they belong to a certain organization in your in your company, uh, like uh, one for finance, one for UC, uh, HR. Just to give you an example, so domain groups is a logical grouping of uh, these UCS managers. So you can define certain policies uh, on the domain group, which you want some common policies on the domain group and push it to these UCS managers. Uh, so you don't have to worry about configuring all these policies uh, on individually uh, on the UCS manager. Uh, UCS manager can move from one domain to the other. Uh, and this is a disruptive uh, process. Uh, can be disruptive, not necessarily disruptive. So you need to take care when you change uh, domain group membership for the UCS manager. Uh, this membership can also be configured if you want to automate this based on, let's say, IP addresses. If a UCS manager belongs to a specific IP address range or a specific site, 
uh, you can define qualification policies on UCS Central. And once the UCS manager is added, registered with UCS Central, it will look for these uh, these uh, uh, these things, uh, the qualification points, and based on these, it will uh, make the UCSM part of a specific domain group uh, or leave it in an unassigned uh, group. So just looking at uh, why we need domain groups. So as I said, geographic location, I have uh, UCSM 1 and 2 in London, 3, 4, 5, uh, 3, 5, 6 in New York, and 7 in Bangalore. So I want to group them uh, together in domain groups. So I can have I can create domain groups on UCS Central, and the UCS managers will be part of those domain groups. Similarly, we can have it based on organizations. Uh, like for IT, you need specific UCSM for engineering one and one for lab. So just to give you a basic idea. So domain groups, you can have up to five levels of subdomains. So in New York, you let's uh, New York. Let's say you have one for one location, Manhattan, one for uh, some other place, or one for some uh, group uh, in within New York, let like for HR or something. So you can have multiple levels of domain groups. So this makes it easier to manage uh, these set of UCS managers uh, because you because of domain groups. Global policies. So as uh, if you remember the uh, the policy control uh, screenshot which which we showed you. Uh, so you can define these uh, policies, global admin policies like date, time, time zone, DNS remote access, SNMP, call home, all, all of these on the UCS Central. So when you register the UCS domain with UCS Central, it will send the, so what what does it send? It sends a shared secret, then certificates are exchanged, and then the policies are pushed. So the UCS Central will push these policies, and based on the UCS manager subscription, it will accept the policies which it has subscribed from the UCS Central. So let's take, for example, uh, how policies are applied. Uh, I have three domains. Uh, one domain, let's say it is in uh, in New York. One is in Texas, and the other last one is in probably California. Uh, so I want to configure time zone based on these where the location where these are located. So I can do that. I can uh, either subscribe for these policies from the UCS uh, Central, or I can configure them locally. Or I can make them part of a domain group and put that uh, configure the time zone for that domain group uh, as Eastern, Central, or Pacific. So what cross launch? Uh, so from the UCS Central, you have the uh, the facility to actually launch UCS Manager or the KVM console for the server directly from the UCS Central. Uh, so these are available uh, in, on the screenshot. You just go to the uh, uh, the server, and there's a small button which with, with which you can actually launch the UCS manager or KVM for the server. So looking at the providers again, uh, so identifier manager, operations manager, policy manager, resource manager, they are they have all registered. As I said, service registry is your directory of services. All these services have registered themselves with the service registry, if you can see. I'll just show it to you. So this is my service registry. And these are my various services which have registered themselves with the service registry. And also, I have UCS managers which register themselves with the UCS, uh, the service registry. So this is the significance of service registry. It provides you, it allows you to, allows the various services to communicate with each other. Right, so you can download uh, UCS Central from the uh, these links. And uh, if you want to practice, you want to test some things out, you can actually use the UCS emulator. We don't have, uh, we may not have uh, so many UCS manager domains. So you may want to use the emulator. You, that link is also given over here. In my uh, my lab, I'm using a couple of UCS emulators to uh, uh, test the UCS central and use them.
it's it's a very helpful tool uh, and might be helpful for you okay so now let's let's uh, come to the polling question 3 and the question is which component is responsible for policy resolution when using ucs central for managing U ucsm option a ucs central option b ucs manager option c policy manager and option d fabric interconnect so please take a moment the, to answer this poll and the poll is open on the right hand side of the console so let's wait for a few few seconds to see the polling result thank you all right thank you for uh, submitting the poll and uh, we also have technical panelists stand by, standing by so please post your questions in the Q&A panel and uh, before we move on Chetan would uh, go through a brief demo over to you Chetan thank you Satish all right uh, so looking at the poll uh, so the policies as I said uh, earlier the policies are resolved at the UCS manager the policy manager you define policies so I see a lot of people have not answered, uh, but whoever answered UCS manager, uh, you have the right answers. Right, uh, so let me just share my desktop. Right, so I have, I'll just quickly show you my uh, my lab. So I have a virtual machine, which I have deployed, which is used as UCS central. I have two UCS emulators over here. Uh, both of them have different IP addresses. And at this moment, I have already registered one UCS emulator with uh, UCS Central. So you access your UCS Central via the UCS the, any browser. Just enter your UCS Central IP address uh, when which you configure during the configuration initial configuration, and you can use admin uh, what uh, username to log in. So we we'll look into this. So this is how my UCS Central looks like. So as I said, I have equipment tab. I can see the fault summary. So uh, which which uh, service provider is responsible for fetching faults? <laughs> okay, I know you can't answer, but uh, I mean, but I, I guess most of you must have thought uh, resource manager. So UCS fault summary. Similarly, you have servers just like in UCS manager. You can see the various service profiles under this. Now these service profiles are actually pulled from the UCS manager and you can also see templates over here. Now looking at network, gives you a very basic, it just gives you the pools which are available. So these pools are actually, you can configure these pools over here. Uh, similarly for storage, you can configure WWPN pools on the storage uh, and IQN pools over here. Uh, from the operations manager, you actually you can configure various uh, various. Uh, for, you can configure what how it downloads information uh, or packages from Cisco.com. So you can specify your username, your password, and you can specify the download interval. So you want to do that every day or maybe once in a week or maybe twice, uh, once in two weeks, or let's say for a, on demand. And download state, it's disabled right now. I can enable this. And you can configure the proxy uh, and the other parts. Similarly, for backup and management, you can schedule backups. Uh, and you can actually have uh, the grouping based on your domain group. So I have two domain groups over here. One is domain group A, and the other one is domain group B. Uh, I will quickly show you what what uh, how it is configured. Uh, looking at so administration, you can define lo users locally. Uh, you you can uh, have remote uh, users like LDAP users, uh, but I think TACX is not yet uh, supported. So service registry, here is where you can see the uh, various providers which have registered themselves. 
and my UCS clients, UCS managers. And uh, just uh, uh, for the demo, if you would like to see anything specific, just post in the Q&A panel, and Chetan can concentrate on that in the demo. Thank you. Thanks, Satish. Okay, so here's uh, where uh, you can see the various service providers. So identifier manager is here, operations manager has registered, uh, policy manager, and the resource manager, and this is my UCS manager, which is registered with the uh, service registry or with this UCS central. And basic diagnostics, I can collect tech support logs directly from the UCS central. So we'll uh, now look into look how we can register UCS central, UCS manager with UCS central. So as you can see right now, I have uh, I have two domain groups, domain group A and domain group B. In domain group A, I have a UCS uh, UCS manager with IP address 10.76.78.157 registered. Now you can see all the inventory over here. I don't have anything in domain group B. Now I have defined two policies, domain group qualification policy. So for group uh, group A, I have said if the IP address matches this range, then it should directly become a part of domain group A. And that is why my domain group A shows UCS manager 157. Uh, similarly, I have uh, defined domain uh, group uh, pol qualification policy for group B, and uh, the the address range I have specified is uh, 161. So my UCS manager second one is actually 161. If you see at the top, so I will go to the. All right, so we'll uh, look into the backup also. Uh, I'll quickly register this UCS manager and then we'll look into how we can uh, take a backup. So I click on register, I give my UCS manager IP address and my shared secret. And it has registered. Now we'll uh, check this out on the UCS central should appear under domain group B based on the IP address. As so you can see 161 has registered itself with uh, within under group domain group B. So backup management, I had a question, uh, a request stating how we can uh, configure backups. All right, so here's where you can uh, configure UCS manager backup so this is where you configure your backup and export policy so i go to under the domain group root so let's say i want to have a a, a policy for my domain group A. So here's my domain group A. I go to backup and export policy and I say, let's say full state backup. I create a new policy. I will say test, test, demo. I will say it's enabled. I want to schedule it for one day and I save it. So this policy gets applied on the UCS uh, domain group. So any UCS manager which is part of this domain group will, if it has subscribed to this, it will, uh, it will do, uh, it will be uh, backed up every day. So this gives you a basic idea of how UCS uh, Central works. Uh, I'm going to stop the sharing. Uh, I had a quick, uh, I had a one more request. I mean for registering the UCS Central once again. Uh, so you can register it from here uh, and I will quickly show you how we unregister it. So once it is unregistered, you don't need the UCS Central to be available for unregistering it. And if I go back over here in the equipment, I don't see my second UCS manager under group B. So it's gone. Uh, and also my policies I will quickly show you. 
so my operational policies this is where i define the time zone and based on your subscription the ucs managers will uh, request for this information if they have set it to global right so i have defined these policies over here under domain group a i have defined the time zone as kolkata asia and the dns as 78.1 i will show you how it looks on the ucs manager so if you if i go to dns management under admin you can see it is configured as 78.1 and i cannot edit this the these two i cannot edit or delete these because these are both grayed out because this is being pulled from the ucs central similarly i will show you time zone management it is configured as asia kolkata which is it is pulling from ucs manager and it is grayed out now just to go back again where where do we define this so you can see i have set time zone management as global and dns management as global so that's why it is pulling these two things from the ucs central so i hope this uh, demo was helpful unless you have any more request i'll uh, stop sharing my desktop Thank you Chetan and I think that was a great demo and a very interactive one and also thank you everyone for participating in the all the polls and now it's time to answer some of the questions our uh, viewers have submitted today and by the way if you can't stay for, uh, with us for the Q&A please be sure to click on the evaluation uh, link that will pop up once you close the browser to let us know how the session met your business needs and expectations and you can also access the survey the link will be shortly posted in the chat window and uh, let me take a uh, few questions uh, the first one chetan the question is do we need to purchase licenses for ucs central domains uh, so at this moment we don't need any licenses uh, for ucs central domains but in future releases we will need them uh, and uh, that will be required only if you have more than 5 domains so the first 5 domains will be you won't require any licenses uh and if you register more domains then you may require licenses but this is in the future releases not currently so you can use it for your testing purpose thank you and the second question is how many domains can we register on a ucs central so uh, i think that's answered but uh, 100 is uh, we have tested more than 100 so 100 domains is a safe number for us okay thank you and let me take the third question do we support replication uh the answer for this is no we don't have any replication at this moment okay great and uh, okay let me see okay here is another one so can we have the service providers installed on different machines instead of just one uh currently all the service providers that is the identifier manager operation manager and resource manager policy manager they are all all compiled packaged into a into a single vm maybe uh, in future if uh, the uh, the computing requirements have in increased for every service they might be uh, separated okay great and time for few more questions uh, the question is can we associate service profiles from the ucs central uh not at this moment uh so this as uh, uh we, this will be part of a future release so right now at this moment what we can do is we can uh, we can define policies we can define pools uh service profiles and templates cannot be defined this will be included in the future release of ucs ucs central okay thank you and okay let me see So here is another question so what is the future plan for UCS dashboard will this be phased phased and replaced by the UCS central uh no so UCS manager dashboard will stay as it is it has to be there uh, because you need a uh, functionality to manage the UCS manager locally so it will be uh, as it is uh, UCS central will be an addition uh, to the ex existing uh, existing dashboard okay thank you 
and here is another one. Uh, what happens to global IDs assigned to the endpoints after unregistering UCSM from UCS Central? That's a very good question. Uh, so uh, those those uh, IDs, uh, if once you unregister the UCS manager or maybe the UCS Central has gone offline, those manage those identities are will appear like they have been configured locally on those endpoints. So let's say a server is, has a UUID configured from the global pool uh, and the UCS central has gone offline uh, or you have unregistered, that UUID will uh, appear as, it, as if it was configured locally on that server and it is not being assigned from a pool on the UCS manager. Okay. So and uh, if you have any other questions, please uh, post that in the Q&A. Uh, Chetan will be answering them. Uh, and uh, if we miss some of the questions, we'll be also posting a FAQ document along with the video recording later after the webcast. And let me take a uh, few more questions. Uh, the next question is, can you upgrade OS drivers via UCS Central? Uh so we cannot upgrade the OS drivers. Uh, only the firmware can be upgraded from the uh, UCS Central, just like UCS Manager. Okay, great. And uh, okay, one more question, and uh, it says, what version of UCSM can we manage from UCS Central? So the the base version that we require is 2.1. It is only supported after 2.1. Anything prior to 2.1? Uh, cannot be uh, managed via UCS Central. Okay, thank you, Chetan. And um, that concludes the Q&A portion of today's event. And uh, we have a raffle for prizes among the listeners that complete the evaluation survey. And you can win 125 CPA points. And uh, the survey link is in the chat window. So, Please uh, take a moment to respond to the survey questions and also we appreciate your feedbacks. And to ask more questions, if you have not explored uh, the Cisco Support Committee, take a moment to check out this excellent resource at supportforums.cisco.com. We'll be posting the recording and uh, all the questions and answers from this webcast in the community at the link provided in the chat within next five business days. And uh, you can access the webcast community once you go to the expert corner. Okay, so uh, here is the next expert series webcast in English that is coming up. And the topic is mobile wireless, how your cellular phone serves the internet. It's on March 5th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is 3 p.m. London time, 4 p.m. Paris time. And expert uh, will be Deepak Mikhail. And you can learn more about uh, mobile, mobile wireless and get an overview of long-term evaluation, that is LTE, and a detailed explanation of the subscriber call flow. The link will be shortly posted uh, in the chat window. And also it, it is available in the, in the support forums webcast community. And uh, these are some of the Ask the Expert, which is live, currently active. And the, the, the first one is uh, on the topic, architecting your co collaboration solution with social and video. And uh, the expert is uh, Gebran, and you can ask questions about this topic to him. It's currently live, and it's active in the expert corner. The next Ask the Expert, which is also live, is about using the Cisco Technical Support mobile app to resolve your technical issues. And uh, it's a great app uh, which uh, helps you to access all the resources of Cisco Support Committee in, in your mobile. And our expert is Kent Wong. So please, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask Kent in that Ask the Expert. The, both these events will end on uh, February 22nd. And uh, there is, uh, if you speak uh, Spanish, there is an expert series webcast in Spanish coming up, and the topic is Neighbor Discovery Protocol, Differences and Migration Between IPv4 and IPv6. Expert is Ricardo Prado, and uh, he will give an overview of NDP, spe 
especially Prado will explain the following topics, the replacement of the address resolution protocol, ARP, equipment auto configuration, and LAN automatic traffic addressing. The webcast will take place on uh, Tuesday, February 19th at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And the registration link uh, will also be posted in the chat, so you can register if you speak Spanish. Spanish. And uh, there are a few other Ask the Expert events in Spanish, uh, and it starts on February 11th. The first is uh, on topic high CPU troubleshooting in Cisco routers, 4500, 6500, 7200, 7600, and ISRs. And the expert is Daniel Garcia. So if you have any questions related to that, uh, you can access the Spanish committee and please uh, post your questions there, and starting February 11th. And it, it uh, ends on February 22nd. And uh, another topic is uh, neighbor discovery protocol, differences and migration between IPv4 and IPv6. This is following the, the webcast. Expert is, again, Ricardo Prado. So if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, post in that as the expert. Okay, so uh, we continue to expand our reach in local languages, and we have communities in other languages, including Spanish, Portuguese, Japanese, Polish, and Russian. The links are provided in the chat window and also in the presentation. So if you speak any of these languages, feel free to co collaborate and uh, uh, interact with experts there. And our presence in social media and iTunes keeps expanding. Visit our community and visit our several channels from there. So all these links are uh, uh, th there. If you are participating in any of these social media, you can access the community from there and collaborate. And uh, last but not least, the correct answer to the trivia question, what do Cisco UCS, the Academy Awards, and India have in common? So the answer is, in 2009, Cisco released UCS. The same year, the India-based movie Slumdog Millionaire won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Okay, so I hope some of you might have really guessed, or was it difficult, but it's just a trivia question. Okay, so before uh, we sign off, uh, please take a moment to complete your evaluation of today's session, and uh, feel free to give uh, the feedbacks any future topics that you would like to listen in the upcoming webcast. This will help us address your business needs and interest in the future. And this concludes our session today. Thank you uh, to our expert, Chetan, for sharing his expertise with us today and a very good, a nice interactive demo. And also thanks to our expert panelists, Abhinav, Pragna, Ganesh, for answering some of the technical questions. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, and just a reminder that a short survey will pop up once you close your browser. We greatly appreciate your feedback. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great day.